Welcome back, this is Baller Scuba with more Let's Play Pokemon Leaf Green. I am joined as always by Dumpus and his leveled up Pokemon squad. Are you ready? Of Cube, Mr. Jensi, Popeye, Lord Young, Fist, Mitch, and Kenny. As you can see, everybody is level 65. A little bit higher than the highest level Pokemon that we are going to be up against, but hey, they are unevolved. You're going to have to give me two levels on this one. But, as some of you might have noticed, my starter is not in the party. I could not find room for him. I could not find room for four Sanja. Let's go over the Pokemon I did bring, though. And we'll stop being depressed about how Sanja is wasting away in the box. First up, we have Cube. I did give Cube the leftovers kind of just in case here. I'll probably be moving the items around from battle to battle. We're going to start the first battle with the, the leftovers on Cube. We're going to take on the Elite Four in case you have forgotten what part of the game told us was the end of the game. Leftovers on Cube. Cube does not have the special attack stat that I would like, to be honest with you, but Cube's type is going to hopefully carry Cube with us along to the end. 107 special attack at level 65 is not that great. Not that great. Uh, but electric, I need an electric type. I just honestly need it. Uh, there are way too many Pokemon that I'm going to be up against where electricity just absolutely destroys them. I, I need it. 171 speed is fantastic. We shouldn't be encountering anything that is faster than Cube. In terms of moves, there are no new moves to report. Charge, Shockwave, Thunderbolt, and Swift. I might actually be using Charge this time. We're going to have some tough opponents, so Charge might be in the arsenal this time. Uh, next up, we have the one, the only, the hard thinker, Mr. Jensei. Mr. Jensei is still awesome. Highest attack stat, well, special attack, but highest attacking stat in my party. 177 special attack is the highest attacking stat out of any Pokemon that I have. The problem is that Mr. Jensi can't learn anything, damn it. Uh, I so wanted to give Mr. Jensi Ice Beam, but it, it wouldn't work. I, I really do want an Ice type move, and Ice Beam was there, but uh, Mr. Jensi refused to learn it. 133 speed is not that bad, but it's also not what I expected. I expected Mr. Jensi to be a little bit faster than that, but in the unevolved form, Mr. Jensi is not as quick as I would hope. Still very, very powerful, though. You have to keep in mind, this is kind of a joke Pokemon. Abra is not supposed to be taken seriously as a Pokemon in and of itself. It's supposed to be evolved into a Kadabra, and then it's really damn good. But Mr. Jensi is good all by himself. No new moves to report. Like I said, I would have taught Mr. Jensi a couple other powerful moves if... I, I thought it would help, but honestly, nothing that uh, he was willing to learn I thought was going to help. Next up, we do have Popeye. Popeye, the Sailor Man. Still naughty by nature. That's what Olive says. Popeye has the lowest attack, attacking stat, once again, out of anybody in my party. It's actually less than 100. It's only 99. However, Popeye's type is the reason that Popeye is here. Popeye's speed also very fast. Popeye is going to be able to get the first turn pretty much every time. Pretty much. Pretty much. 99 special attack though, not necessarily going to carry me. As a result though, well as a result of Popeye's type, Popeye I taught Ice Beam too. I had to go out of my way, go back to Celadon, spend a whole bunch of money purchasing TM13, I believe it was, in order to get Ice Beam. And I might not use it, to be honest with you. Surf is still going to be the move that I go to with Popeye. Ice Beam is still pretty damn powerful. It's just as powerful, but it doesn't get stab damage and... I don't know. I'm, I'm iffy on it. It's... 
It's coming from a Pokemon with the lowest attacking stat in my party. I might still use it, but it's it's going to be rough. It's going to be a tough decision for me to make. Uh, the foe was struck with an icy beam. It may freeze the foe solid. Uh, I hope that it does, because it might not kill the foe. Uh, bubble beam, probably not going to be used at all. Recover, probably not going to be used. I have plenty of potions and full restores because I know what I'm going to be up against. Next up, we have Lord Yawn. Lord Yawn does have the Quick Cloth. That will probably move around from battle to battle, but for the time being, Quick Claw and Lord Yawn. Lord Yawn actually made the party because of Lord Yawn's attack stat. Uh, the type, not necessarily fantastic. You don't necessarily need a flying type in the battles that you're going to be up against, it's kind of iffy. You, you could have it, it does have certain uses. Lordeon might be here for the normal type more than the flying type now that I think about it, but the 148 attack is damn good. 129 speed, also nothing to be ashamed of, especially since it doesn't even have wings. In terms of the moves, moves are the same. Pursuit, Drill, Peck, Try, Attack, and Fly. I'll be using Drill, Peck probably the most if I bring Orion in. Might not have to, but then there's Fistimich. Fistimich might be my go-to for the upcoming fights. Fistimich is probably going to see quite a bit of action. Fistimich is just plain awesome. Leftovers on Fistimich because Fistimich is the tank of my party. Never thought I'd be saying that about a Kangaskhan, but then again I never thought I would have a Kangaskhan. 168 attack. Fistimich is damn powerful. Defense and special defense are very high as well, along with a lot of HP speed. Also, very quick, especially considering the size of Fistimich. Basically a rhinoceros-kangaroo hybrid, but it's fast. It works. It works. 157 speed. The moves are the same as we last left it off. Uh, double edge. I'm gonna use this possibly. Uh, it, it depends. If if need arises, double edge will be used. But most of the time, I'll be using fake out and strength. Uh, dizzy punch. If I really need a confusion to land, but I don't particularly like playing the odds on that, so it'll probably be fake out and then strength. And that's fist image. You knew that fist image made the team. Then there's Kenny. Kenny is probably the surprise for a lot of people to make the final cut. Uh, but Kenny did beat out Samja. Like quite a bit. At least in my eyes. Kenny, we have not really used Kenny as a normal attacking Pokemon before. I have brought Kenny in order to try to catch Pokemon due to Kenny having hypnosis, but. Kenny has 166 special attack, and that was a number that I simply could not ignore. 140 speed, also pretty damn good. Defense and special defense are god-awful. They average the level. 67 defense, 63 special defense it, defense, it averages 265, which is Kenny's level. That is not good. Also, the attack is low, and you might be wondering, why do I care about that attack stat? Because Ghost is somehow physical. I looked it up like three times. I'm like, why, why isn't it doing as much damage as I want? Oh, Ghost is a physical move. How is Ghost a physical move? I, in the first generation, there weren't any Ghost moves, so this was something that eluded me, but Ghost is indeed physical. It sounds weird when I say it, even now. Uh, but uh, Kenny does have a ghost move that is Shadow Ball. Uh, power of 80, accuracy of 100, and this is really what threw me off. A shadowy blob is hurled at the foe, may also lower the foe's special defense. So when I use this physical move, it will lower my opponent's special defense, so then I can do special moves to it. Uh, Kenny does make the team, though, because of Dream Eater. Dream Eater is actually more powerful than Psychic. 100 power, 100% accuracy. The catch is uh, that your opponent needs to be asleep in order for that to work, which is why Kenny still has Hypnosis. God, I hope that lands if I try to use it. 
Confused where I'll probably go out first. That lands every time. And then I'll just pray that the odds work in my favor. And that is the squad. Now, what we are going to be doing is taking on the Elite Four. We know almost nothing about the Elite Four. We're in a giant, empty Pokemon Center here. But there is this guy. Do you guys recognize him? He's been with us damn near the entire way. Yo, champ in the making. At the Pokemon League, you will face the Elite Four all in a row. If you lose, you have to start all over again. This is it. Go for it. And that's all the information that we get. We don't know anything about the Elite Four. We don't know their names. We don't know the types. We don't know what Pokemon they're going to use. But we have to face all four of them in a row, apparently. Uh, there is a shop here. That is a very important shop. Hi there, how may I help you? Uh, I've gone ahead and purchased everything that I need from here. Uh, full restores in particular, I have 20 of them. I probably won't be using all 20, but I got 20 just in case. Uh, max potions are here. I would I would rather use a full restore to be honest with you, just, just to have it. I don't even have any max potions, I don't think. Uh, oh. No, how many did it say I had? I went too fast. Oh, I have five. I don't plan on using them, though. Uh, revives are here. I don't think they sell max revives. No, they don't. So, if you are allowing your, your Pokemon to die on you and you want to resurrect them from the dead, like some kind of necromancer, I would suggest at least ten revives. Especially if you have not done substantial level grinding. Full heals. Also kind of necessary. Uh, they are relatively cheap here. You can just buy quite a few of these and not have to worry about what status effects you're going to be up against, especially since they don't tell you. Full heals are definitely something that I would recommend. At least 10. There are quite a few statuses that are coming your way. They also sell max repels here, which I don't understand at all. Why would you do that? This is not the place for max repels. But hey, they have them. And then finally, we do have you. From here on, you face the Elite Four one by one. If you win, a door opens to the next trainer. Good luck. Once again, no information. They tell us nothing. And you go plateau. The ultimate goal of trainers, Pokemon League HQ. And we will head through that door and take on the first of the Elite Four. In one sec. Rearranged my items for easy access. Full restores, full heals. Now at the top. Let's head in. See what we are up against. We do get a little bit of a clue when we walk in, but as soon as you walk in, the door shuts behind you. So I hope you brought your good Pokemon with you. Uh, the hints that we get are these pillars here. They have blocks of ice on them. I wonder what that could mean. How you doing? Welcome to the Pokemon League. I am Lorelei of the Elite Four. No one can best me when it comes to icy Pokemon. Freezing moves are powerful. Your Pokemon will be at my mercy when they are frozen solid. <laughs> are you ready? And it's boss time. We're up against Lorelei. Lorelei is an ice trainer, which means mostly water. She's mostly going to have water type Pokemon. Mostly water ice. She has Dugong out front, level 52 in these versions of the game if you're playing the originals. Uh, level 54, but to be honest, they're easier at level 54 because they've got worse moves. But we've got Cube out front. Cube should do wonders for me. However, Dugong has a ton of special defense. So I'm going to have to start with a charge here. I do not trust Cube to be able to take out this Dugong in one hit. Dugong uses Hail. That is perfect. Well, not really, but this is why I gave Cube leftovers. You have to kind of know in advance what's going to be happening. So a little bit of damage done by the Hail that will do damage to everything that is not Ice type. And I got all my health back, so so much for your damn Hail. Let's go with the Thunderbolt. 
Is that going to be enough to take out the dugong? You have 13 levels on it after all. It goes down, down. Where's the first Pokemon? And we're making some progress here. Yeah, give me a ton of experience. Okay, Cloyster is now going to come out. Uh, level 51 in these versions of the game. If you're playing the original versions, it will be level 53. Cloyster, though, sucks. I think you guys are aware of that. If you try to go at it with a uh, rock, you're not going to do well. But if you go at it with grass or electricity, then things will work out well. Now is not the time to be licking and punching the cloister. Just go for the thunderbolt and get it over with. Why is it so horny? Down he goes, though! Like, that whole Pokemon design is just so weird. A lot more experience there. I'll take it. Okay, switching to a slow bro. I will stick with what I got. Slow bro, as you, I'm sure quite remember, has a ton of special defense. Okay, hail is continuing to fall. 52 in these versions, 54 in the originals. Oh, slow bro, by the way, not ice. Water psychic. So, it is also affected by the hail. All right, we're gonna have to charge here. I cannot take it out with one hit without charge. And if I start trying to take it out, oh, nice, it's, it's charging up too. It means cube will live. If I try to take it out and I get its HP down quite a bit, but not enough to kill it, Lorelei will start using full restores. In the original versions, I believe she only has super potions. So once again, just because they're lower level does not make this an easier fight. All right, let's go for Thunderbolt. Should be able to take out the slow bro, I would hope. Of course, I'm faster than it, but is the charged Thunderbolt going to do it? It does. Down goes Slowbro. And that, that Pokemon can be a little difficult. All right, Lapras is coming out. Cube, this is going to be the tough one. This is her hardest Pokemon right here. Lapras level 54, 56 in the original versions. Once again, ton of special defense. I'm going to need to go for a charge here. Because I do not trust Cube to take it out with just the Thunderbolt, and I don't want her healing it. All right, it goes for Ice Beam. I'm counting on you, Cube, here. You need to live through this. Oh, that was a critical. I was about to say, come on, I, you had higher special defense than that. But Cube made it. Cube made it. All right, Thunderbolt. Life flashed before my eyes there. Cube, can you do it? Down goes the Lapras. The toughest Pokemon that Lorelei has is now gone. Ton of experience for killing that one. And she's finally going to be using Jinx here. Jinx is the only Pokemon that she has that is ice and not water. As a result, Cube is going to have to be switched out, which is fine, I need to heal him anyway. Uh, Jinx is Ice Psychic, actually better than an Abra. I will say that. Better than an Abra, Jinx. And it's actually, I like the type. Ice and Psychic doesn't learn any Psychic moves, but you can, you know, teach it Psychic. I do want to point out that in the original versions of the game, Jinx had a black face instead of a purple face. Uh, but here in America, blackface is kind of a racist thing, so they had to change that. Uh, Jinx has, like, no defense. Lots of special defense, but no regular defense, so strength will be more than enough to take out the Jinx, I believe. Yeah, down goes the Jinx. No, oh, I got a critical, too. I don't think I needed it. I don't think I needed to do a fake out. I don't think I needed to do any of that. Jinx is not good defensively, physically. And down goes Lorelei, one of four down. It was so close. Things shouldn't be this way. Yeah, I know. You would have thought that you would have killed a Voltorb with a critical hit from your Lapras's Ice Beam, but you didn't. 
and I get a ton of money for that. You're better than I thought. Go on ahead. You only got a taste of the Pokemon League's power. Don't I know it? All right, time to heal and rearrange the party. <laughs> 